Tonight on CTV, we see how Colorado State celebrates Earth Day. Get a closer look at so-called magic mushrooms. And learn more about a CSU basketball player signed to the NBA. Good evening, Rams. I'm Kristen McAllister. And I'm Matt Leisman. Earth Day was yesterday, but we kicked it off today at the LSC with the Earth Day Festival. Reporter Isabella Roberts has more. Today, festivities continued after pre-Earth Week events with the Earth Day Festival in the LSC Sculpture Garden. I mean, I feel like every day is Earth Day, but I like the fact that on at least one day, everybody can come together with the common goal of appreciating what the planet has done for us and like understanding that some things have gone wrong and some things could go better and basically committing to making things go better. So we're the Zero Waste team. Um, today we're making like eco bricks, which is like your hard to recycle plastic and you just have to rinse it off and then compact it down. You can like build things with them like normal bricks. Um, and we're just, we have a mending cafe. And the Zero Waste team also hosts the magic mending that we do after this from two to three every other Tuesday. And we do things like teach people how to embroider, um, fix their clothes, patch it, and things like that. And the Zero Waste team, as, as like a whole, we volunteer at sporting events and sort trash, like at the basketball and football games. Um, and we just try to teach the student body about like what's compostable and what's recyclable and what goes in landfills and things like that. The tables featured at today's event consisted of groups from all over CSU's campus and the Fort Collins community. There's lots of us out here on the plaza, but one of the things we're celebrating today is the solar system that you see from the plaza on the, on, that's on the engineering building. That was our first solar system on campus, and its 10th birthday is in a month. And so we're celebrating the 10 year anniversary of solar coming to the rooftops of Colorado State. Now we have 14 systems across campus that are, we've, we make a thousand times more power than we did 10 years ago when we put this first system in. But I think now more than ever, Earth Day is every day and we need to make this important every day. This is Isabella Roberts reporting with CTV. So, Krista, Earth Day was yesterday. Uh, what kind of steps are you taking to help protect the environment? I mean, there's always the Save the Turtles campaign, so just cutting back on my use of plastic straws to kind of help save our marine environments, and then also just picking up trash as I'm walking along to help preserve our beautiful Earth. <laughs> How about you, Matt? Uh, yeah, reducing plastic use is a big thing for me. My mother is actually a huge proponent of getting rid of plastics completely. Uh, so whenever I can, I try to make sure I fill up my own personal water bottle, use reusable bags at the grocery store, that kind of stuff. Yeah, of course. And for more information about this week's events, you can go to source.colostate.edu. Last week, a petition titled Fair Pay for Faculty at Colorado State University was launched in an effort to get livable pay for non-tenured faculty. The petition demands CSU implement guaranteed minimum salaries for non-tenured faculty. The salaries start at $52,000 per year for full-time faculty. The petition has received support from past and present faculty, CSU alumni, current students, as well as the community. Petitioners hope to reach 1,000 signatures by May 3rd and currently have 917. If you're interested in signing the petition, it can be found at the link below. On April 16th, two construction workers died after being buried in a 15-foot trench. The two men, Christopher Ramirez and George Valdez, were working at a construction site in Windsor. They were tying the house's sewer and water lines to Windsor's lines when the trench collapsed. More than 100 first responders came to the scene and worked for about eight hours to rescue the workers. Civilians had the idea to run a PVC pipe down to the men to communicate with them and to help them breathe. One man was completely buried, and rescuers were unable to locate him until later, but the other was found near the pipe and managed to survive while being buried for more than six hours. That man was able to speak with his family through the pipe and say his goodbyes before he lost his life waiting to be dug out. Our crews felt that it was important for, for this family and for him to, to, to have an opportunity to speak. As responders, we, we were concerned that, that we might have a, a, a poor outcome, but we wanted to make sure that, that, that he and they got a chance to communicate. A GoFundMe has been set up for both men's families. Did you see the smoke in the foothills this past weekend? The Colorado and reports the public should not be concerned. 
The United States Forest Service conducted a prescribed burn in the Poudre Canyon. Firefighters on Saturday burned 500 acres of the Elkhorn Pingree Hill. Prescribed fires, also known as controlled fires, may be designed to create diverse habitats for plants and animals, to help endangered species recover, or to reduce fuels preventing destructive fires. There will be no recount in the race for the Fort Collins City Council seat that has been won by only 40 votes. Julie Pignataro won over Noah Hutchinson in East Central Fort Collins District 2 in the city's closest election. If anyone wanted to request a recount, they had until last Tuesday. The less than 1% margin of victory was not within the threshold for an automatic recount. Pignataro told the Coloradan that she was relieved to know the outcome and was ready to get started on the city council. The new city council will be the, for the first majority female council in Fort Collins history. Summer break is nearing and some Fort Collins residents are worried an ordinance will cramp their summer style. The Coloradoan reports a local group is hoping to repeal the recently imposed curfew on backyard wood-burning fire pits. Supporters of the re repeal have been gathering signatures to force city council to either rescind the curfew or to put it to a vote. The ordinance passed March 19th sets a 10 in the evening curfew for wood-burning fire pits and a 15-foot setback from property lines. It doesn't apply to fire pits that are non-wood burning, like gas fire pits or appliances designed for cooking, such as grills or smokers. Professor Camille Dungy is believed to be the first woman at CSU to win the Guggenheim Fellowship. Dungy teaches in the Department of English and is among 168 scholars, artists, and writers to receive the fellowship this year. According to Source, the picks were based on prior achievement and promise. The winning candidates were chosen from a group of almost 3,000 applicants in the Foundation's 95th competition. If you've walked around the plaza recently, you might have noticed signs for the CSU Psychedelics Club. I was curious, so I went to one of their meetings last week and spoke with the president and found the beginning of a nationwide movement. An estimated 24.4 million Americans suffer from PTSD. Teresa Egbert, a junior soil sciences and microbiology major, was one of them be the first thing I thought about when I woke up, the last thing I thought about when I went to sleep, and it was just destroying my relationships and everything in my life, really. Teresa tried many treatments, but none of them seemed to help until she looked into microdosing with psychedelic psilocybin mushrooms. It was the first time I woke up and I didn't want to end my life. It was the first time that I woke up and I was like, maybe I don't have to live with this forever. And it was just the first time that I felt like I had some kind of hope. Psilocybin is currently a Schedule One drug, meaning it has a high potential for abuse, no accepted medical uses in the United States, and a high risk of toxicity. However, the FDA recently granted breakthrough therapy status to psilocybin. Dr. Ken Kassenbrock, a mycologist at CSU, explains why. They appear to be make a major difference in many people's lives, a, a sort of transformative experience. John Hopkins University, the NYU School of Medicine, Sao Paulo University, and many others have tested and shown that psilocybin can help combat mental disorders. It's not just universities doing the testing, though. There are people already using these substances, and for many of those people, the biggest problems they face are the legal challenges rather than the toxicity associated with the substance itself. Psilocybin mushrooms are by no means a miracle cure for mental illness, and there are potential dangers. Certainly at high doses, people can imagine they can fly and jump off buildings or stare at the sun and burn their retinas. So I think the models that are the most interesting in terms of society now are potential administration of these substances under the guidance of a therapist. There are already movements around the United States to make these treatments available. On May 7th, the city of Denver will vote on ballot initiative 301, which would decriminalize psilocybin mushrooms in the city. The state of Oregon will also vote in 2020 on an initiative that could legalize psilocybin therapy. These initiatives could pave the way for further legislation on a national level, and Teresa is excited. Mental health is a really big problem um, right now, so we need more options, and I think this could help a lot of people, so it's important to me. I would like to personally thank Teresa for sharing her powerful story with me. If you're interested in CSU's Psychedelics Club, they meet on Wednesdays in LSC, room 376.
Okay, so I have, I have a lot to say about mushrooms uh, because I learned a lot and did a lot of research for that story. Uh, the first thing I'd like to say is that the CSU Psychedelics Club is not a place to do, source, or sell psychedelic drugs. Please do not go there trying to do that. Um, and yeah, it's just really interesting to me that there are so many potential applications for psychedelics. There's so much research out there showing that they could potentially help with a lot of different mental illnesses, but it's so hard to get the research done when they're on that Schedule One level. Yeah, of course. And I definitely think that with the new push for making mental illnesses more aware in uh, modern society, I think it's definitely important that we're kind of going through these new research projects to find different cures for that. So I think that even though some of that legislation may be a little difficult to get passed, I think it's definitely something that's worth being looked into. I agree. And that's all we have for you tonight. Thank you so much for joining us, Rams. Don't go anywhere, because up next, Hannah Willis will let us know how long this sunshine is going to last. Listen, I realize that I'm not perfect, but it all really started to change because you judge me for having a problem. No one is going to know that I need help. I need help. I know that no one is going to judge me for having a problem. I realize that I'm not perfect, but it all really started to change because you listen. Good evening, and I'm your Tuesday night weather anchor. Um, I hope you had an excellent Easter weekend. The current temperature outside is 63 degrees and it is also sunny. The wind is blowing at 6 miles per hour with gusts up to 7 miles per hour. The sunset will be later this evening at 747 in the evening. The warm spring day today felt more like summer as many people were enjoying their walk to class including this furry boy. Uh, the spring flowers around campus are still being enjoyed and their colors range from red to oranges, purples and pinks and everything in between. You better believe that the leaves around campus are springing to life as well, and the skies were blue and sunny around campus, making this spring day wonderful for everyone. Going into tonight's lows, we see things along the I-25 corridor will remain 40, except for Denver, which will be five degrees higher. Um, going to the west side of the state, Grand Junction will be a little bit warmer, reaching 47 degrees. And going over to the east side, even cooler at 38 in Burlington. Going into tomorrow's highs, things are warming up quite a bit with Fort Collins, some of the warmest temps in the state at 72 degrees. Denver's just a temperature uh, warmer at 73. And over in Grand Junction, we see that it's a few degrees warmer at 76. And over here at Burlington, it's 75 as well. Going into tomorrow's forecast, the high is expected to be 72 degrees and the low is projected to be 46. It's going to be partly cloudy outside with wind picking up a little bit at 8 miles per hour and we'll see a slight humidity increase up to 39%. The sun will set in the evening at 749. Going into our seven day forecast, we see that things are supposed to warm up quite a bit. So if you didn't get out to enjoy Earth Day last weekend, if you'd like, now is a great chance. I don't know about you, but the way the Earth turns really makes my day. We do see a bit of rain on Sunday, however, but it will still be warm at 75 degrees. Thanks for tuning into the weather. Up next, Jess and Tara have your fix with softball and what's going on in sports. They said I couldn't dream. Called me a piece of trash and swore that's all I'd ever be. Said a bottle couldn't see the ocean. Give up. Go back to the dumpster. But I didn't listen. I made my way. And now, I am what I've always wanted to be.
How's it going, Ram fans? And welcome to the JT Double Take. I'm Tara Barrio. And I'm Jessica Mendoza. Tara, the NFL draft is in a week, and there are two CSU Rams who have a shot at getting picked up. So for Preston Williams and Ola B.C. Johnson, where do you think, if at all, they'll get drafted? For B.C., I'm not 100% sure when or where he'll get drafted, but I definitely have a feeling that he's going to end up with former CSU Ram Michael Gallup in <laughs> Dallas, Texas with the Cowboys. <laughs> and for Preston Williams, if he gets drafted, I think it's going to be to a team who's in serious need of a wide receiver. Well, Tara, I think Preston Williams has a better chance of getting drafted. I honestly think he could go in the third or fourth round if these scouts have really taken a look at his tapes. He's really got that speed and those skills. But um, Ola B.C. Johnson, I think if he doesn't get drafted, if he does, it'll be, I think, quite a bit later in the draft. But if he doesn't, he could always become an undrafted free agent. And some of those players end up going really far in their careers. So I'm definitely looking for that from B.C. Yeah, well, I guess we'll have to find out this Thursday when the draft picks kick off. Absolutely. Well, speaking of drafts, the nation's leading rebounder and center at Colorado State, Nico Carvacho, has decided to enter the 2019 NBA draft. But hold on, that doesn't necessarily mean he isn't returning for his senior year at CSU. A new rule change from last year now allows underclassmen to enter their name into the draft to receive feedback from scouts without losing their eligibility. Carvacho announced his decision yesterday, which was the deadline. Now Carvacho has until May 29th to determine whether he wants to stay in the draft or return back to school. And that likely depends on whether he feels he has a good chance of being picked up or not. So while his plan is to just get feedback from scouts, if that feedback is good enough, he could be the first ever Chilean drafted to the NBA ever this year. If not, Carvacho will return for his final season as a Ram in hopes to continue to grow under Medved and the rest of his coaching staff and prepare for the 2020 NBA draft. Well, there's nothing like blue skies and 70 degree weather, and that's exactly what the Colorado State softball team got in today's game against the UNC Bears. Last time the Rams faced UNC, they ended up going into extra innings, winning 4-3. In today's game, the Rams were able to find their bats early in the bottom of the second, scoring five runs. Ashley Ruiz, who led off the inning, scored the first run for the Rams to break the scoreless tie. The bats continued to stay hot in the bottom of the fourth when Tara Shadowin hit her 11th home run of the season, with a two-run shot over the right field fence to start yet another rally for the Rams. Pitcher Gilmore, Taylor Gilmore was able to hold the Bears to only three runs and six hits. Dean and Klein hit a walk-off triple in the bottom of the sixth inning to run roll the Bears and end the game 11-3. The Rams stay in first place in the Mountain West with a record of 34-6. They will play San Diego State Aztecs on Friday here in Fort Collins at Rams Field starting at 4 in the afternoon. Well, here at CTV, we tend to stick to covering club, pro, and Division I athletics. However, there is another category of sport here at CSU, and it has become very popular among students. What you're seeing here may just look like a regular game of pickup football. What you may not know is that this game is part of something much more. This is Intermeal Sports, or IM Sports for short. IM Sports is an on-campus program that offers multiple leagues for CSU students, staff, and affiliates to play in. That's right. You actually don't have to be a top-of-the-line athlete to play sports in college. It allows other athletes um, who don't want to play on a regular team to participate in other teams and to all just bond together and have a great time. People can come with their friends and meet other friends and everybody gets to connect and do different things like that. So I think having intramurals is huge just for kids at the school, it gives them a chance to still play sports even though they're not actually like an athlete at the school. With thousands of participants each year, there is plenty of opportunity to make new connections on campus. I love intramurals. It's so much fun. I love the community. I love coming in and seeing everyone's face and how much fun they have playing these sports. Not only do students have the chance to play, but they also have the chance to get a job. Between 50 to 70 student officials are employed during a semester. What is nice for them is that they can get more than just a paycheck. A lot of what we try to do is set people up to succeed at whatever is next and, and work really hard to make sure that they leave ready for the whatever career path they're going on. For those who are looking to be involved in the world of sports, they might not have to look further than their own college campus. 
I think everybody should get involved and I think you should be active and get outside and just have a great time. I'm Lee Tess Castro with CTV Sports. Well, there's, those intramural games do look really fun, and I myself, I do play in an inter intramural volleyball team. It's super fun. It is definitely a great way for students to get involved around campus. Yeah, it's definitely very inclusive, so I recommend every CSU student to try something new. <laughs> but, well, Ram fans, it's time for another week of Disrupted Picks. Today we have a submission from Allie Lenning, and she asks, Tim Anderson's bat flip just led to a big scuffle against the Royals last week. Are bat flips disrespectful? Well, Jessica, what do you think? So this is a great question. That definitely did uh, prompt a very big scuffle. But personally, I think bat flips are awesome. Evan, you up there, roll the clips for me, please. Let's take a look at these awesome bat flips, the best ones ever in all of history. I don't know what it is why people in the NFL can celebrate their touchdowns and do whatever they want, but when you hit a home run from a ball that's going 90 plus miles an hour, you can't flip the bat and walk around the bases and celebrate. I think that's just crazy. If you don't want that to happen, throw a better pitch, and that is what I think. Just take a look at these. They're so fun. Look at, oh yeah, look at that bat flip right there. I love it. I love it. <laughs> but Tara, I think you're gonna have a different opinion than I do. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> just a little bit. I mean, play my clip right now. <laughs> I mean, look at this. Look at Carlos Gomez, who played for Milwaukee, but now plays for Tampa Bay. Just look at the way he's eyeing down the pitcher. I just think that is probably one of the most disrespectful things that you can do. And look at that, how he just eyed down the first base, uh, first baseman. I mean, and then here you have um, Jose Batista doing the exact same thing. <laughs> I just think that there comes class when you hit a home run, and Woo, you should look at that foot. <laughs> You should definitely show the class, though. I mean, look at that. I mean, I think it speaks louder when you just set your bat down. Not necessarily set your bat down, but it's almost like a mic drop. You just kind of drop the bat, yeah. and you just run. And you go score the run for your team. And I think it speaks louder. And it's kind of like, I mean, Cody Bellinger, who's one of my favorite role models when it comes to this, he hits his home run, and he runs the base. And, I mean, he's had 11 home runs this season. And I feel like the people who do bat flips just like that are the people who maybe hit one or two home runs this home runs a season. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> but I definitely think it's really cool. I do agree. It can be really, really tough for someone to hit a home run and then just drop the bat. But honestly, I think it makes the game a lot more fun, in my yeah. opinion. <laughs> but Ram fans, that is all we have for the JT Double Take for this week. But for more sports throughout the week, be sure to head to our Twitter page and follow us at sports underscore CTV. I'm Jessica Mendoza. And I'm Tara Barrow. But stick around, Rams, because up next we have Justin Ruiz has all you need to know about the new donut shop in Fort Collins. Yum! <laughs> so don't go anywhere, Rams. <laughs> They told me a bottle couldn't dream. That I would never become a superhero. But I learned how to fly. Just to come back in a new disguise. And be the hero that I've always wanted to be. Good evening, Rams. I'm your entertainment guru, Justin Rios, here to guide you through your Tuesday dose of entertainment. We have, exciting, we have an exciting show tonight with a new donut hotspot in northern Colorado and short films. So, let's get started. With summer just around the corner, everyone, including myself, is scrambling to find their year-old workout regimens and prepare for that hashtag beach life. While there are many diets telling you not to indulge in sweets, these don this new donut shop with a twist is one you may want to try on your cheat days. Donuts are likely the last thing you think about when it comes to 420. Opening this past weekend, the Donut Club offers a guilt-free alternative to your typical sugary sweet donuts. 
We absolutely love how the city embraces entrepreneurs and local businesses, and we'd like to partake in that ourselves, and so we just felt like it was the perfect fit for us and our family. Appearing on Shark Tank in 2018, owners Andrea and Marquez Fernandez sealed the deal with Shark Barbara Corcoran on their first location, the Dough Bar. The donuts at the Donut Club are infused with protein to pack that powerful punch that sugary-induced donuts tend to give too much of. There are gluten-free options with a vegan option coming soon. You can enjoy a protein donut that's baked, not fried, on a certain day, and then maybe you want to splurge and have fun and go with a gourmet donut another day. The Fernandezes are planning to ship their sugary sweets from the Dough Bar and the Donut Club all across the country. The people here around the surrounding neighborhoods and cities um, can enjoy and have a different experience while you're here in Fort Collins. The Donut Club hopes to bring a creative and entrepreneurial spin on donuts. We love growth and we love education and that's what our company is all about, trying new things and learning as you go. And as customers, you are left with one question. If you gave someone a decision to eat a protein bar or a donut, what would you choose? The Donut Club is open all week from 7 in the morning to 9 in the evening. If you are leaving, if you leave a review on Yelp or check in on Facebook, you can receive a drink on the house. Whenever Disney releases new movies in theaters, I tend to enjoy them more if they're accompanied by short films. While living up to the name, short films tend to give broader, more meaningful social and cultural messages in less than 10 minutes. Human rights and untold stories are the themes of the first screening of ACT Shorts in the Museum, coming to the Gregory Alicar Museum of Art and of Art Thursday, April 25th. The stories celebrate diversity and differences in perceptions, which gives a voice to marginalized people. The short films begin at 5 in the evening. One of downtown Fort Collins' trendiest upscale restaurants is in for a big change. The Kitchen, an, an American cuisine bistro in Old Town Fort Collins, is closing its doors on Memorial Day weekend to make for a new restaurant. The Next Door American Eatery, from the, same look, from the same founders, the Kitchen Restaurant Group, Next Door American Eatery features vegan, vegetarian, and gluten-free dishes with locally sourced ingredients. The Kitchen will close shop after its last brunch on May 26th. Well, that's all the time I have tonight, Rams. Thank you for tuning in, and make sure to come back tomorrow night for Espanol Telediario, same time, same channel, with the people you know. See you at FOCO MX this weekend, and good night.